What's more important than a person claiming to be a prophet and foretelling an event accurately? Seems like that would pretty well do it, doesn't it? Well, when we look at the subject of prophecy, there's actually something more important than getting an accurate prophecy under your belt. I'll tell you what that is before the end of this video. A lot of people believe the self-proclaimed psychic Jean Dixon was a prophet. In 1956, she predicted that a Democrat would be elected in 1960 and that he would die in office. Well, a Democrat was elected in 1960, and his name was John F. Kennedy, and he died in office. So now Jean Dixon is credited with prophesying the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Well, that's what most people remember. However, there's more to it than that. What they don't remember is that in 1960, Jean Dixon changed course and predicted that John F. Kennedy would fail to win his presidential bid. She got that wrong. But wait a minute. If Kennedy wouldn't be elected, then he couldn't have died in office according to her 1956 prediction. And so she got it wrong. As a point of interest, my mother predicted that John F. Kennedy would die in office. She was not a prophet, but she did put a little bit of stock in a curse that was called the zero-year curse. Look it up. She didn't really believe in curses, but she did believe that there were enough crazy people in the world that someone would try to make it come true. You'll often hear spiritualist believers cite the prophecies of Edgar Cayce. Some of Cayce's predictions involved dramatic changes in the Earth's surface from 1958 to 1998. The cause of these, he claimed, would be a tilting in the Earth's rotational axis, which he said would begin in 1936. He said by the end of the century, New York, San Francisco, and Los Angeles would all be destroyed. It didn't happen. He also predicted that in 1958, the U.S. would discover a death ray that was used on the city of Atlantis in its destruction. That didn't happen either. Nostradamus is another one. He's commonly cited as proof of, of prophetic ability. In one extremely vague passage, Nostradamus is credited with predicting the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster, which did occur in 1986. Of course, he specified that nine would leave the Earth when, in fact, there were seven involved, which means he got it wrong. Nostradamus illustrates the peril of being specific with a prophecy. By the way, we've already in this series noted several Bible prophecies that got very specific and yet all was fulfilled. Another prophecy of Nostradamus was the year 1999, seven months, so that's July of 1999, from the sky will come a great king of terror to bring back to life the great king of the Mongols before and after Mars to reign by good luck. Well, I guess we all realize that he got that one wrong, too. Yuri Geller was a big sensation in the early 1970s. Stanford Research Institute studied him, and they, they reported that he had extraordinary powers. They called him back in 1974 after learning of his, his techniques for telekinesis, and they subjected him to further tests that this time had strictly controlled circumstances. Well, this time... He couldn't demonstrate any of those previous powers that he had. You know, here's where the spam hits the fan. We say three strikes and you're out. That's true in baseball, but that is not true in prophecy. In prophecy, you're not allowed any strikes. Listen to this from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. And you may say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. If you get it wrong, you're not a prophet. If I accurately predict the outcome of the next presidential election here in America, Democrat or Republican, that wouldn't be very amazing. It's pretty much a 50-50 chance if you take out the, the small parties that we don't expect to win anyway. But if I get it wrong, that tells the story right there. Just in one fell swoop, 
One wrong prediction proves I don't have the gift of prophecy. So 100% accuracy is what I was talking about at the beginning of this video. You can never get a prophecy wrong. The Bible gets it all right. Nothing else does. Next in this study, we're going to look at the accuracy of Bible prophets. There are some who charge the Bible with making failed predictions. They even accuse Jesus of this. So I hope you'll join me in part seven of this study as we answer the critic on Bible prophecy.